today we'll be looking at the the top transmitted and stress is developed in the thin rectangle section which is uh, under torsion okay so the method followed or the derivation we will be pursuing will be by Prandtl's method and obviously Prandtl's method uses Prandtl membrane analogy so uh, what is membrane analogy is uh, I'll summarize it a bit so we have something like del square phi is equal to minus 2 g theta this is by Prandtl's method this is the summary of Prandtl's method So where phi is the stress function and theta is the twist by unit length, g is the modulus of rigidity and so on. So if we look, uh, and this is the Prandtl's method. So if we look at something like a uh, membrane, uh, like a soap film or a rubber membrane, which is stretched onto a, um, say, an anlace or a ring, and we apply a pressure to that. Uh, uh, membrane, it will deflect. It will obviously, it will deflect, and that uh, the shape of the membrane is given by something like del square W or del square Z. Del square Z equal to minus P by T, where P is the pressure. That is, that is used to blow up, that we use to blow up the membrane. T is the surface tension. So here we assume that surface tension is uh, something like constant throughout the membrane. And P is the pressure used to blow up the membrane. The Z or Z is to the uh, height of the membrane uh, after it is blown up. So if we look at these two equations, this is the membrane equation. We can see that this is something that we can visualize. So if we compare these two, if in a particular case, something like uh, if 2g theta is equal to p by t, f p by t is equal to 2g theta, then we can see or we can observe what the uh, stress function would look like. So we have that the top transmitter is given by nt is equal to to integral, integral over the area phi da or dx dy okay and the volume under the membrane is given by v is equal to integral of dx dy dz so this is I want to this if we integrate this we will get the volume this is a triple bit so if uh, we have a relationship between z and dx dy this will be something like well, integral over the area dx dy dx dy so we can see that if by uh, assuming that in, in a particular case if p by t is equal to 2g theta then phi becomes analogous to z okay so in this case this is uh, visualized this we can visualize the shape of the membrane we can visualize then phi tends to z then 2g theta tends to p by t and what I can say is something like the volume tends to be mt Thing is, we have to replace this. Is okay, the thing inside that. So, obviously, we can visualize this, these things, and this will simplify the problems quite a bit. So, hence, we can use we use uh, 
the membrane analysis quite a bit in solving uh, for things like uh, thin rectangular sections and uh, hollow tubes and multiply sections etc so here i'll be using uh, plantar membrane analogy this is called as a plantar membrane analogy because we are using two equations two poison poison equations which are very similar and hence the solutions are comparable so we'll be using this in case of thin rectangular sections so in a th uh, consider a rectangular section which is uh, which has a length of a, uh, a section which has a rectangular cross section consider a section which is, which is a rectangular cross section let its breadth be b and let its thickness be t okay i have shown the uh, cross section here so and this is a thin rectangular section so uh, the this is not a generalized version where b can be anything and t can be anything here we assume that the breadth very much greater than I think it's only then we can um, take this derivation or uh, solve it like this so suppose that we uh, have this cross section and we put a membrane on it and we blow it with a pressure p and let the surface tension be t okay so this is this would be the shape of the blown section at a b and c obviously uh d d d d this thing the periphery and the periphery the membrane will be fixed okay so the, at the periphery the membrane is fixed at the at other sections the membrane is uh, will have a displacement or it's blown so if i take a section uh a b at a a b b or c c we have a, a shape like this and if i take a section y or the y axis okay a parallel to y axis we'll have we'll have a shape like this hence d d these regions which i have drawn here so in this region that is between b and d and c and d we have considerable curvature so we are not considering going to consider this region we are going to consider the region between b and c this region okay so we can see that between b c this is fixed and this is fixed okay so if i take a small section of length 2t and break this arrow you can see that i projected here So we can see that if I project it here and here, so we can see that the projection through the y-axis, we can see that it, it's not, it's flat. Okay. Here we have pressure. So it's not this isn't contributing to supporting the pressure this region but if i consider this region that is a, take a small curve that is contributing to this pressure that is this is a curve which is on the um, uh, section which is on the z z x plane Okay, this parallel is explained. So this contributes to the pressure. So this, if I uh, take a component, you can just always resolve this. So this component is supporting the membrane or uh, is causing the membrane to take its shape. So from this, we can say that dou z by dou i is equal to zero because z is obviously from this figure is not does not depend on y 
So at any y, it has almost a flat shape. So what uh, about the x direction? Its shape changes. So dou z by dou x exists. So from this, I can say something like from th this is the uh, equation which is uh, the equation for a stretched membrane. So z is the uh, displacement uh, of the membrane. T is the uh, pressure applied. T is the mm, surface tension. Okay, so from the above uh, analysis, we can see that dou z by dou x exists and dou z by dou y is equal to 0. So we can apply into this equation. So the del square reduces to dou z by dou x square. So integrating this twice, we will get something like z is equal to minus k by t x square plus c1x plus c2. So c1x plus c2 are the constants, integration constants. So to remove them, we have to apply the boundary conditions. So from the above figure, we can see that when x is equal to minus t by 2, this is t, so this is minus, this is plus t by 2, and this is minus t by 2. But plus t by 2 and minus t by 2, the boundary is fixed. So z is equal to 0. So applying this, we get 0 is equal to, first case is um, when x equal to t by 2, c1 t plus 2 c2 is equal to p by t. So we will get two equations. Substituting and solving, we will get c2 is equal to pt square by 80 and c1 is equal to 0. Okay. So the shape of the membrane is given by this thing. That is z is equal to z by 2t, t square by 4 minus x square. So obviously we can see this is the equation of parabola. And as I have drawn here, we will get a parabola. The cross section will be a parabola, uh, the membrane will be a parabolic cross section. So, how um, can we transpire this into the equation of stresses? So, we can see we have uh, the membrane analogy that is, we have obviously we have Z. So, as I have said earlier, when Z tends to phi, then P by T tends to minus 2 theta and we have V tends to MT by 2 where MT is the top transmitted. So from this we can see that the macular will be maximum at plus or minus T by 2 which is given by the same. So applying the membrane analogy when Z tends to phi P by 2 P by t tends to 2 the theta, we get tau max. So dou phi by dou x is equal to tau from our definition. So we will get tau max is equal to g theta t. Okay. So here p by t is g theta. So next is to compute the torque transmitted we just have to compute the volume under the membrane okay so to find the volume under the membrane we assume that the there is no pinching here yeah we assume that this is a very long sheet and or this is a very long bar and there is no pinching here if i assume something like that we can say that the volume under the membrane is the area under this parabola multiplied by the total length okay that's what i have written here so the volume is given by b into integral of all the area dx dz from this figure we can say that see that at any point z the area would be or the area of this small segment which is of which has a thickness of dx would be if this is a very infinitesimal volume would be dx times this length so area da is equal to is it dx okay so total area under the curve is given by integral over 
minus t by 2 2 plus t by 2 z dx z is equal to 2 into integral of 0 to t by 2 t dx that's what we have here so here I'm comp computing the volume so this is 2b into z into dx so this is a very simple integration if we integrate it, we will get the volume under the curve is 2 by 3 t into p by 2 t. t square, this is uh, for that to understand. So we will get this thing, volume is equal to b p t q by 24. So this is uh, written in a split fashion here. Yeah? So volume is given by b p t q by 24. Okay, and if I apply membrane analogy, we'll get when uh, v when z tends to five, e by t tends to p theta, and then two v tends to m t. So the torque transmitter is given by we just replace p by two t by d theta. Okay, we'll get torque transmitter is d theta p t q by three. And the shape of the stress function is given by g theta t square by 4 minus x square. Okay, so uh, m t by theta is also called as the uh, stiffness, torsional stiffness. So, um, in case of uh, a circular bar which is subject to torque, we have seen that m t by theta is equal to g j, where g is the Geometric uh, G is the polar moment of inertia or the geometric component of stiffness. Here we have a similar thing, so here we, we can write G is equal to BTQ by 3. Okay, so the sh uh, shear stress is obviously given by minus dou phi by dou x. So we can see that phi is equal to 2g theta t square by 4 minus x square. So we have uh, tau shear stresses minus dou phi by dou x so we will get something like minus 2 g theta x okay. and in case i should have minus 2 g theta x so the maximum would occur at x is equal to t by 2 substituting in this equation or oh, this equation does matter again on the three okay. x okay so the maximum stiffness of correct the two is equal to three empty by b t square okay so you can see from this thing that as t increases decreases okay. so the maximum stress will occur when t is very close to the center okay so if i have if i uh, have a beam which is the maximum stress will occur here okay we, uh, we have if we ignore the stress concentration part um, uh, away from the center and the thickness is larger here the stresses will be lower so one advantage of uh, this membrane analogy is that it is something like uh, even if i have a bend okay, suppose uh, i have two sections one is like this and like, like this and suppose that both have the same length and same thickness yeah same length and same thickness if uh, b is considerably larger than if the length 
is considerably larger than or the breadth is considerably larger than the thickness so if the breadth is considerably larger than the thickness of this of the cross section then we can and if we ignore its stress conservation effects the only parameter that contributes to the stresses will be the length and the thickness okay so if their lengths and the thicknesses are the same we can treat them as identical obviously we actually we will have to take into account the stress concentration but here we can consider them to be identical so for example if uh, we have an eye beam here so um, I have just marked some letters that is its length of the uh, flanges are L1 L2 length of the web is L3 thickness of the flanges are T1 T2 and the thickness of the web is T3 okay suppose it is subject to torque of T and we have to find the angle of twist by unit length the shear stress tau. So and um, suppose um, we are not given the table itself, so something like that. So we can ignore this, uh, and if uh, we can ignore stress concentrations, and if L one is very much less larger than the thickness, the lengths are very much larger than the thickness. In that case, the uh, the equation that we have to follow is uh, g is equal to btq by 3 and tau max is equal to 2mt by g into x okay. and uh, the other equation we know is uh, mt is equal to d theta into j okay these three are the equations that we have to use so from this uh, the observable difficult thing or the difficult thing to find is j so from this it is very simple to find out j uh, we can obviously find out j where j1 is uh, the geometric stiffness of the j1 and j2 are the geometric stiffness of the flanges and j3 is the geometric stiffness of the web so just add them together and substitute we'll get the values for uh, the torque transmitted and the twist by unit length and the uh, stresses of that i section thank you